Welcome to the third video of our series on spear and shield. Last time we discussed applying the techniques of our first video, but there was one very, very important thing missing. And that is the throw. So for this video we switched the location a bit to not destroy anything and gave it a shot, wielding dual spears and no swords since that was not allowed at that point. My first advice would be to be not shy throwing your spear. Yes, the second spear in your shield hand can elongate it, forming a formidable defense. But most of the time I'd throw it for distraction anyway. Remember you can throw a punta dritta or reversa, so left or right, depending on where the opponent's shield isn't. The throw is actually quite a bit faster than the thrust, since you are really committed to that action. So to defend, don't forget the footwork to perform a body void as well as defending with your weapons and shield. Use the throw always as a threat to make your opponent move and try to use that tempo, so the time frame, for more pressure. Also, remember how many weapons you are carrying. After you have thrown your spear, switch to your second one in a one or two-handed grip. Like Marozzo, I'd say the two-handed version is actually really, really good for dueling. Here you can see me engaging Stefan's partisan left to right to push a low thrust to his legs. If you throw the spear from too far away, it's actually fairly easy to defend. Instead, get a bit closer force your opponent to duck behind their shield to blind them and then keep the initiative on your side. Since a question came up, we are using the cold steel spearheads, which aren't super durable but also just cost around 12 euro. I like these quite a lot, but you should probably attach them to your shafts properly. A bit of duct tape would already do the trick. Maybe you are wondering why I hold my second spear tip up, since tip down would probably be faster for another throw or going overhead. Well, there isn't anything about it in the Bolognese sources, but Pietro Monte advises us this grip. I think it favors the switch to a two-handed grip, as well as some true dual spear shenanigans just like this one. If you did cast your spear, I'd say there are two ranges where you are really safe. Far away or really close to occupy the opponent's spear to prevent their throw in the first place. Stefan tries, but with the pressure the throw is bad and his switch gives me a huge tempo to attack. Like anything in martial arts, spear throwing is really its own skill. Hitting a target is one thing, but even more important is the timing. Here I wait for my opponent to step to throw my spear at his destination, landing a true fight ender. Here you see that the edge of distance we naturally play on switch to that of the throw. This would be by the way not the case if one of us switched to the underhand grip as that would be less powerful and would only come from the dominant side. I think this is the main reason for the overhand grip. If you've been following us on Instagram, you might have already seen that I started teaching Partizan and Rotella in person again. Hopefully, one of our next videos in the series will be this weapon combination within a small skirmish. If you would like to see that, make sure to follow this channel. As you can see, I am really under a lot of pressure by just not having the option to throw my last remaining weapon away. So I'll just wait. If Stefan would have recognized this, he should have gotten in way closer, at least for his second throw. Thus my advice would be, always keep your cool, assess the given situation if possible and play to your advantage. Else I'll thrust you on the flank. If you are without a shield, you can of course still parry the throw 
just like you are parrying thrusts. It's just a bit harder. But you can displace it to the inside like here or to the outside in the manner of a falzer. If the elastic flat of your spearhead catches the shaft, that might help as well. Morozzo advises us to discard our shield if the opponent's spear gets stuck. Monte goes one step further and says we could throw it as well. But maybe I should have tried it in gear in the first place at least once. If you can't do it fast, it won't be a surprise. It's easy enough. Therefore, in this following exchange, I try to be a bit sneaky about it and that worked quite a bit better, since my cover was up during the switch. Here you see a nice invitation, followed by a good parry with proper footwork from Stefan. Maybe a bit too circular even, making his follow-up slower than it needs to be. With the right hand forward, the shield is basically just extra weight for me. Though I have to say, I'm still a bit more comfortable with the right hand in front to all to that longsword practice. Of course, you can grab the opponent's shaft if you are close. Since we both do it here, I use Stefan's own shaft to disarm him with a turn of my body to the right. If you thrust low, remember to keep your shield up. This is no Hollywood, where you can open up for a better camera shot since your opponent will politely wait for the turn. Another good advice, this time from Marozzo, is to thrust at the opponent's dominant hand. You either hit or you provoke a reaction that you can then counter. To be really honest, I love the spear. It was my first weapon when I started 12 years ago and I still think it's a great tool to get into this hobby. It's cheap, fairly easy to learn, but hard to master. With these rubber tips you can fairly safely throw them as well. You need of course consider the weight and not go all out. Still, the fights feel totally different and more complex this way. Also, don't forget to experiment and have some fun. Especially the Bolognese sources are not famous for telling you why they are preferring certain kind of actions. This is where I think it becomes really important to try the alternatives to understand why the masters of old favored certain actions over other ones. Keep in mind that their preferences might have been completely different to our modern ones. Heck, even my own preferences change over time. We finished this session with some two-handed spear. While this looked funny, I actually managed to parry with my forearm. Still, I would call this more luck than skill. If you are careful enough, you can practice cutting with these spearheads. Of course, you could use the spear just like a staff and go for even more strikes. I just wouldn't advise it for anything above light intensity sparring. After all, the shaft of the spear will hit just as hard as the historical weapons. Last tip of this video, don't stand too wide and low. It makes you slow on the feet. To counter it, just step the leg. Remember, if you would like to support us, please hit the like button and say something nice in the comments for the YouTube algorithm. Maybe you have questions? I'd love to discuss them with you. If you would like to support us even more, you can now buy us a coffee or a fencing book. Link in the description. Thank you very much and until next time.